Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Doc. I keep hearing people say that prices of properties are too high and there's no way that they can invest now. They say things like, I'm going to wait for the crash or the correction and then I'm going to buy. In this video, I'm going to show you how high property prices should not stop you from investing. I actually wish the properties that I purchased cost more. One of my goals is to help people who get trapped in the cycle of crash videos. I get it. Crash videos get views, so people keep making them. The problem with the YouTube algorithm is when you watch a video and you watch it all the way through, YouTube thinks that's the content that you like, so it keeps feeding you more. So if you watched a couple of crash videos, your feed is going to fill up with more and more crash videos. In a lot of those crash videos, people say things like, Wait for interest rates to go up because that's going to cause property prices to come down and then you can buy and be an investor. It's like you're buying on sale. And I see the irony there because they haven't done the math. If property prices do go up and if that ended up causing prices to come down, your cost stays the same or goes higher. You're just paying more money to the lender instead of the seller. A lot of people have been calling for a crash or a correction since 2013. As soon as prices went above where they were in 2008, people keep saying, we're in a bubble, there's going to be a crash, don't invest now, property prices can't keep going up. CNN actually just did a video calling the 2021-2022 housing bubble the same as the 2008 housing bubble. And the only actual thought process they used was, since people don't think we're in a bubble now, and they didn't think we were in a bubble then, that we must be in a bubble. This means people have been missing out on eight years of cash flow, appreciation, principal pay down, all of the tax benefits, waiting for something that we're still years from happening. Don't get me wrong, I know that real estate runs in cycles and eventually there will be a crash. But not today. But like I said, even that is still several years away. The goal of my channel is to help the average individual understand that you can reach financial freedom in 10 years or less, even if you're not starting from the best position, which I wasn't, and I did, and you will. As you saw in the thumbnail, I purchased a duplex for $298,000. I closed in 2018. A friend just closed on a duplex in November of 2021. I paid two ninety-eight. dollars She paid $555,000 for the same sized duplex, about six properties away. So if we look at the first year of ownership, who do you think got a better deal? So this is where I'm going to ask for a little bit of audience participation. In the comments below, before I explain my thought process, I paid $298,000 for a duplex that has three bedrooms on each side, and a one and a half bath on each side, and she paid $555,000 for a duplex, six houses away, where it, there's three bedrooms and one and a half baths on each side. Almost the same, hers is a little bit bigger, but she paid almost twice as much money. First year compared to first year. Who do you think got the better deal? Please hang up and try again. Thank you for participating if you did. How does price impact purchasing a property. Not too many people know that there are actually four categories of buyers when it comes to properties. The person who will pay the most is usually a home buyer, somebody looking for a place to live. They buy based on payment. They actually have the thought process of how much can I afford to pay every month? That tells me how much house I can buy. The second one on the list is the investor. We invest based on yield or cash on cash return. So what is my return going to be? That tells me if a property is worth pursuing or not. Then the third is the people who do flips. So they buy based on the value that they can add, purchasing a property that they're going to fix and then sell at a profit. The fourth one is the wholesaler, the person who's looking for a motivated seller and then a buyer who's willing to pay more and then they keep part of that wedge, the difference between what they found the property for and what they were able to sell it for. These four tiers are impacted differently when prices go up. But the real question that I'm trying to answer in this video is, are current home prices too high to purchase? So the first thing to look at is those home buyers, since they're willing to pay the most usually. 
they're buying based on payment. And payment, cost is only one aspect of the equation. We are seeing record wage inflation, more than I've seen pretty much in my entire life. Fast food companies are almost doubling what they were paying two years ago. Chick-fil-A is starting entry-level positions out at $18 an hour. That is rippling across all wages. Even our company had to do a 20% wage increase across the board to maintain staff and then to attract new ones. So when we look at the investor, how does price impact them? Wages don't only affect how much a person is willing to pay for a house, but it's affecting how much they're willing to pay for housing. So wage inflation is affecting rents. And we are seeing rents skyrocket. I see ridiculous quotes from different agencies saying rents across the board are going up 2.3 or 3%. In my market, at tenants' requests, we are seeing rents increase 20 to 40%. 20 to 40%, not 2 or 3%. And since part of the calculation to figure out a cash-on-cash cash return is gross rents, as rents go up, investors can afford to pay more for investment properties. Flippers are still doing pretty well because even a newer flipper who's making mistakes that has time delay where they don't figure out the rehab timeline right, appreciation is happening so fast that even when the flipper makes that mistake, they end up looking like they know what they're doing because a couple of months later, when it took them longer to sell the property, we're still seeing prices inflate enough to where they're making a profit. To me, this is kind of risky. Can't count on appreciation. But currently, they're doing well. But so far, I'm just talking about prices going up. There's three things that affect when we purchase a property. Remember the phrase, it's always a good day to buy a great deal. When we're looking at price, we have to also consider interest rates. Currently, interest rates are about half what they were when I purchased my duplex in 2018. So I paid $298,000 in 2018. My friend paid $555,000 at the end of 2021. And our cost, our monthly payment actually isn't that different because her interest rate is half what mine was. So she may be paying a little bit more, but again, more money went to the seller and less money went to the lender. On top of interest rates, if you remember what I said about rents going up, wages set rents, we're seeing record rent increases. So take a look at the whole picture. Price, higher, yes. Interest rates, half. Rents, almost double what I was able to get three years ago, almost four years ago now. If you balance out all three of those, price, rates, and rents, our deals aren't that different. And I get it. The phrase is true. Time in the market beats timing the market. So whoever purchased the property and has held it the longest has the better deal. If we look at me buying it in 2018, my rents have gone up. I've refinanced to a lower rate. I've got an amazing deal. But I'm comparing that first year to first year in 2018 when I was making the decision to purchase. In 2021, when my friend was making the decision to purchase, who got the better deal? My cash on cash return after I used the binder strategy in 2018, which is my strategy that gets the tenants to request a rent increase, my cash on cash return was this much over 10%. It was like 10.02% cash on cash return, which is my metric. And I'm super happy with my purchase. My friend is getting almost an 18% cash on cash return based on current rents, current interest rates, and her purchase price. If we look at cash on cash return, the more expensive property is performing better and is a better deal. I said at the beginning of this video that I wish my properties cost more, and I'm actually putting my money where my mouth is. My goal now is to find a fourplex in my footprint, the area that I search at, that costs at least a million dollars. My last fourplex, I paid $590,000 for. I'm hoping that my next one costs at least a million dollars, as long as the yield scales with my purchase. And one final thought on those people that are waiting for the crash or the correction, we do not have any of the indicators like we did in 2008 that would cause a crash. We do not have ninja loans. Lending criteria is actually fairly strict. I know I've gone through it once this year. I purchased a duplex in May and it was the biggest pain was lending. 
We don't have a lot of adjustable rate mortgages. That was one of the biggest causes of the 2008 housing crash. And a lot of people have equity. So even if they weren't able to make their payments, which they don't have a ninja loan, so they actually qualified to borrow that amount of money. And they don't have an adjustable rate, so their payment's not about to go up. People have equity. So instead of a flood of foreclosures, we might see people start to sell properties. So we'd have more units available on the MLS. But we're still millions and, well, yeah, almost 2 million properties from a balanced market. So when I said a lot of people are saying that prices are high, they are right. But rates are half what they used to be. Rents are almost double and they're continuing to go up. We have to look at the whole picture to figure out if it's a good time to buy a rental or not. Make this a year that you take action. You are going to be alive in five years. Start investing like it. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion Talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.